Hello there guys and welcome, it is Niran here and today it is time for round number 2 of our Carlos Sainz Jr. career mode here on F1 2015 and in today's episode we are of course here for round number 2 at Malaysia and it is raining, it's known for its unpredictable weather, today we'll be starting on the intermediate tyres, uh, we're looking at a 2 stop by the looks of things but that's depending on whether the, the weather doesn't change or not, which is highly unlikely, I have to say, for this race. I just want to say a massive thank you for 85 likes as I'm recording this on the first episode. Absolutely massive amount. If you could smash 50 on this episode, that would be absolutely awesome. But before we get into the race, it is time for the qualifying report. Q1 would once again see Lewis Hamilton fastest in the Mercedes from his teammate Nico Rosberg. Sergio Perez and Marcus Ericsson will be hugely disappointed with P17 and P18 on tomorrow's grid. Much like in Australia, Nico Rosberg would be the fastest Mercedes in Q2, this time from Kimi Raikkonen's Ferrari. Both Scuderia Toro Rosso cars managed to qualify into Q3, however Felipe Nazza would just miss out. Daniel Kafiat would also be disappointed, starting only 15th on the grid for Red Bull. But once again, it would be Lewis Hamilton who would come out on top in Q3, again from teammate Nico Rosberg. Kimi Raikkonen and Sebastian Vettel took 3rd and 4th for Ferrari again, whilst Williams seemed to struggle in the wet conditions of Q3. So all of this means Lewis Hamilton will start the Malaysian Grand Prix on pole from Nico Rosberg, Kimi Raikkonen and Sebastian Vettel in the other Ferrari. Daniel Ricciardo took 5th as the lone Red Bull from Bottas, Massa, Sainz and Verstappen, with Hülkenberg rounding out the top 10 for Force India. So here we are on the grid, a very damp Malaysia here, eighth on the grid with Carlos Sainz Jr. The elegance and action is underway as the lights are now off. It's an okay start for Sainz Jr. by the looks of things, not too much wheel spin, but it's a better start for his Toro Rosso teammate Verstappen to the right hand side. Nico Hulkenberg trying to go to the outside, I think Sainz trying to switch to the inside there, but Verstappen cleverly uh, sort of cutting that one off. He does allow a car's width up the inside going down into turn one though, and going around the outside now of Verstappen is Sainz, I think that's Bottas actually as well, he's trying to go around the outside of and he has in fact finished that off. A lot of oversteer on exit though coming around this long turn three, but Sainz Jr. May Making up a position overall off the line, but two through that first corner, passing Verstappen and Bottas after Verstappen passed him uh, through, or sort of on the on. Well, after the after the start in front of us, as you can see, the Williams of Felipe Massa and the Red Bull of Daniel Ricciardo are having massive amounts of battles at this moment in time. As we said, obviously Williams aren't great in the wet, sort of traditionally. So it's quite interesting to see Massa struggling down in six at the moment behind the Red Bull at a track where really it's all about just sort of pure brute speed really down those long two straights, the back straight and the home straight. So it's interesting to see that the Williamses are struggling so much because Bottas is down into ninth. It's been an appalling start for him, but a massive slide for Sainz Jr. And that's allowed his teammate Max Verstappen to go around the outside going through sector three. He even got on the grass, there'll be even less grip on the grass, but he's managed to get back onto the track. He's only lost one position and he's now going to try and get this back immediately from Max Verstappen, perhaps thinking about a move through the penultimate corner, but deciding against it. Of course, no DRS in these intermediate conditions, and yet more oversteer for Science Jr. Verstappen just seeming to cope with the wet conditions a little bit more when it comes to traction out of the corners, but down this back straight, Science closing in a little bit there with the use of the slipstream. They'll probably go into rich fuel mix as well as they now, go, uh, they now round the final corner and onto the home straight. Lewis Hamilton sets the fastest lap of the race. Unsurprisingly, he's led the first lap. He had to have been fastest. As you can see, though, Science Jr. bearing down on his teammate Verstappen now, and surely this will be an easy move down into turn one. Up the inside he goes. He outbreaks himself slightly. A little lock there. 
on the in on the front right, but he's just about managed to uh, to get it turned in. And uh, that is seventh place back again after a fairly hectic first lap for the Spaniard. Now in front of him is Felipe Massa in the Williams. As you can see there by the team radio engineer, the Lorraine is here to stay by the looks of things for at least 20 minutes. Now moving on to lap four, we've actually managed to catch Felipe Massa. Again, realistic, the Williams is, are struggling in the wet. In the meantime, though, Bottas has managed to pass... Uh, Science's teammate Verstappen for 8th place, so at this point in the race, Science is closing in on Massa, Bottas is closing in on Science. it's sort of an accordion effect here on lap 4, Massa seems to be the cork in the bottle and I think Science and Bottas will be held up behind him fairly shortly, Verstappen holding up a train uh, for ninth place as well behind the Finn in the Williams, but coming towards the penultimate corner now and Science probably closer than he's ever been to the Brazilian in that Williams as they head out of the penultimate corner and down this back straight. Uh, we're looking as if I think we're going to pit on lap 9, I think it is, by the way, I'm not entirely sure. But as you can see, that Williams power unit stretching away massively down that back straight uh, for Felipe Massa. And it's always going to be a difficult thing, really, for Science to make overtakes here on Mercedes-powered cars. Because those are really the, the main sort of overtaking positions. So it's always going to be very difficult. And as you can see, he might not even be overtaking. He might have to defend from Valtteri Bottas here, who's attacking. He's gone to the outside, and that is an easy move. For the Finn at this point, maybe it would be a wise idea for Science Jr. to just try and stick with Bottas, who's clearly quicker than Massa as well, because he's caught both of us, and maybe see if he can nick past the, uh, the Brazilian when Bottas moves through. As you can see, we're riding on board with Maldonado down in 15th at the moment, just behind Alonso. We've gone very, very wide here. Some sort of steering failure, I think, for Maldonado, because that is him out of the race there. The first retirement of this race, and it's past the Maldonado. As you can see, moving on to lap 9, the tyre wear's really started to kick in, and both Bottas and Massa have decided to, well, they've managed to sort of escape a little bit up the road uh, so that's not that's not great for science but he's still maintaining a decent gap back to his teammate uh, Max Verstappen as we now come into the pit lane at the end of lap 9 I think it's Felipe Massa coming in as well in front of us in the Williams so he's clearly going for the same strategy a two stop at this point in time but of course, if the weather changes, if it gets drier or even wetter by the end of the race, that could change massively. It's a pretty poor pit stop, though. 4.2 seconds from the Toro Rosso guys, and it's allowed Nico Hulkenberg, who was, who was sort of in the train behind Max Verstappen. He is now right behind Carlos Sainz, and Felipe Massa's escaped up the road massively. So, this not a, not a good not a good pit stop, really, from the Toro Rosso guys, having to hold for a lot of guys, but as you can see at the end of the lap, I don't know whether Massa was suffering with cold tyres here, obviously the, the tyres are going to take a little bit longer to heat up because we're on a wet surface, but Felipe Massa really, really struggling with his tyres, and Hulkenberg as well, we managed to gap Hulkenberg by about four seconds on this lap, and now Carlos Sainz Jr. is bearing down on Felipe Massa as they go down into the final corner, I expect a Valtteri Bottas in the other Williams will be pitting on this lap, but as you can see, no DRS, but hopefully with the slipstream, Carlos Sainz Jr. might even be able to make a move on Massa. Massa down uh, into turn one, a purple last sector actually there for Sainz, so he's really, really flying up the inside we go, Massa allows us the space, it's a slow move in the end, it was almost invited through by the Brazilian, but it is moved done, and as you can see, we're in the same position on the next lap, Valtteri Bottas struggling to get some heat into those tyres, maybe it's just a Williams thing, maybe they, they, they obviously do struggle in the wet, maybe they're just struggling to get heat into the tyres, whereas this Toro Rosso is having no such issues, and up the inside through the penultimate corner, the Spaniard goes through past Valtteri Bottas, and that is 6th place, now it's Daniel Ricciardo up the road, he's about 10 seconds up the road, so I think our battle, or sort of our highest position, unless there's a retirement, is here, Valtteri Bottas trying to go right round the outside now, down into the final corner, but Science they're managing to hug the exit, not going too deep into the hairpin and not allowing Bottas to get any sort of undercut, but as you can see again, that Williams power unit is obviously going to get a much better drive out of the final corner, and Bottas trying to go to the outside yet again, this time down into turn 1, as we flick down into standard fuel mixture, but I think Science Jr. will be able to hang the um well, he'll be able to he'll be able to ease Bottas out wide there. In fact, he does. He doesn't allow Bottas to have the inside line for turn two, and that is job done. On to lap 15. The skies appear to be getting a little bit brighter, and Valtteri Bottas's pace is getting a little bit brighter there. We've gone a little bit wide, and that's allowed Bottas a little bit of space up the inside. And surely this will be job done. Uh, as well, he's just going to breeze past with that Mercedes power unit on board with the Finn, and through he goes with the DRS open. Interestingly, clearly it's dry enough for DRS rest to be open. As you could see there, a little message on the radio from my engineer saying that he couldn't actually give me any data 
on the weather forecast. I've never seen that before. I don't know if any of you guys have seen that before. Drop in the comment section if you have. But we've lost out to Valtteri Bottas here as Carlos Sainz Jr. And now it's lap 18. It's looking significantly drier. There's not too much rain coming off the tyres. The rain is also meant to be stopping in 10 minutes, apparently. That will be before the end of the race. So, with the tyres going off now massively, as you can see by the fact we've dropped behind Bottas so much, Massa has already pitted. So, if it is time for slick tyres at this point, Massa's done for, because he pitted about three laps ago, and he'll have put on another set of intermediates. So, he's going to pit. He's going to have to pit one extra time if he has done that. We're into the pit lane, though, now. Because these tyres are gone. But the Williams pit crew are actually out in the pit lane there. I think potentially Valtteri Bottas has had the same idea as us. Now it's interesting because our race engineer didn't actually get on the team radio whatsoever. To tell me that it was time for dries. But clearly the other cars are coming in. Everyone else is streaming in. We've gone for a set of primes. Because I know that they're going to get me to the end of the race. Putting a set of options on would be pointless with 10 laps to go. They just wouldn't last, especially on this car, because it seems to be pretty harsh on its tyre wear. But it is interesting, actually. Quite a few people went for split strategies when it came to the tyre compounds, as you can see on the screen. And namely, uh, the guys in front and behind us. Valtteri Bottas decided to go for option tyres, and Max Verstappen decided to go for option tyres as well behind us. So in theory, we should end up losing time to Valtteri Bottas, and also falling back into the clutches of Max Verstappen. We have about a 12 second lead over our teammate at the moment as Carlos Sainz Jr. So it should be okay. As you can see, the track is now pretty much bone dry onto lap 24. But Max Verstappen isn't really catching us. It's nothing major. We've only got like five lap, four and a half laps to go. So Verstappen isn't going to catch his teammate Sainz here by the end of the race. So it looks as if it's going to be a very, very lonely final stint. And that's, that's what it ends up being. Because we now move on to the final lap of the race. Lewis Hamilton has already won the race. And it looks as if it's going to be a fairly lonely end to the race. But it will be a very, very solid 7th place yet again for... Well, a solid result. We obviously didn't come 7th last time out. I won't ruin the result just in case you haven't watched that. But if you haven't watched the first race, I do suggest going back and watching it. Because the, the, the standings in a minute may potentially ruin it. Nevertheless, we're coming down the back straight here to take a pretty damn decent 7th place. It's not our objective, which was 5th. But it's, pretty, it's a pretty good result nonetheless. It would have been nice to try and stay with Bottas, but we managed to beat the other Williams of Felipe Massa, so that's an okay result. And across the line we come to take 7th place from our teammate Max Verstappen in 8th, which means a very, very good haul of points for Toro Rosso in stretching away from Sauber and maybe even catching up to... Was it Lo No, stretching away from Sauber and Lotus and trying to catch Red Bull and Williams in front of us. But there are the standings after that race. Lewis Hamilton taking the win in a fairly uneventful race, it has to be said. The final stint was... So lacklustre, it was quite incredible. But the first two stints were okay. So there was quite a bit of action elsewhere for quite a few other AI cars, including Verstappen in that train that he was holding up. Rosberg taking second from the two uh, Ferraris of Raikkonen and Vettel. Ricardo there, Bottas, Sainz, uh, Verstappen, Massa and Grosjean rounding out the points. So Grosjean getting his first points of the season. Daniel Kvyat not recovering from that pretty poor 15th place. He only finishes 11th and outside of the points. So here is how that race affects the driver's standing. Sebastian Vettel still out on top by four points from his teammate Kimi Raikkonen, but Lewis Hamilton now bursting up the driver's standings to third from having no points in Australia to now having 25. He leapfrogs Daniel Ricciardo in fourth, and it's Rosberg up into fifth after that second place and a retirement as well. Or oh, sorry, uh, no point scoring for him. We are, though, seventh, just a place behind Felipe Massa, though, so it's a pretty good start to the season for us at the moment. There you can see the rest of the standings. Our team at Max Verstappen, they're in ninth in the championship at this moment in time. In the Constructors' Championship, Toro Rosso have dropped down to fifth now after that 1-2 for Mercedes, which sees them jump from seventh to second in the standings, but still Ferrari out on top from Mercedes and Williams on 33, and Red Bull and Toro Rosso, their joint fourth. Very interesting to see the, the main team and the sister team actually joint on points. As you can see again, there is a driver standings in the background. I hope you did enjoy that race. Next time out, we'll be in China for race number three of this championship. Feel free to leave a like if you did enjoy that race around Malaysia. Fairly crazy at the start with the changeable weather as well. But unfortunately, the last stint not really providing too much action. 50 likes again, that would be absolutely awesome. So if we could smash that, I'd be massively appreciated. And I may even try, if that happens, try and get round three out for Sunday. That's only three days away. So if you do that, I'll try and I'll try and get that out on Sunday for you. Comment about enjoying the video if you enjoyed it that much. And subscribe if you are new around here for new F1 2015 content on career mode and on sprint mode as well. It's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today though. Have a good day, enjoy yourselves, and goodbye.